Welcome back. In the previous session, we were discussing about sex recombination in different organisms. In this session, we will be discussing the last topic in this chapter that is genetic disorders. But before we start that, we have a couple of simple terms to understand. So let's start. The first term that we need to understand is what is called as polygenic inheritance as the name itself suggests poly means many genes which are inherited so this is a situation or phenomenon where one trait is controlled by three or more than three genes so these are called as polygenic inheritance when three or more than three genes are responsible for the trait or phenotype it is called as polygenic inheritance the best example for this is human skin color so human skin color is let us say it is controlled by three genes let us say these genes are a b and c a b and c are the dominant forms whereas the recessive forms will be in the small case so in this situation the darkest skin color is because of the dominant gene so that would be a a b b and c c so individuals possessing this genotype will have the darkest skin color whereas the lightest skin color that is very fair is due to this particular genotype and in between all the different shades of black and brown and other colors are due to the intermediate phenotype so this could be maybe this so an individual with this genotype will have a intermediate character so you can see the different possible skin colors that could arise because of different genotypic combinations for example this could be a medium one whereas think of this particular combination or think of this combination or you can think of another combination so this explains the reason behind human beings possessing different skin colors of course these genotypes are also influenced by the environment so environment will also have an impact on the skin color so this is what is called as polygenic inheritance contrary to polygenic inheritance we have what is called as pleiotropism or pleiotropy here in pleiotropy a single gene is responsible for many phenotypic expressions so one single gene is responsible for more than one phenotypic expression that is what is called as pleiotropy and such genes are called as pleiotropic genes one of the best examples for pleiotropy is the disorder phenylketonuria now this phenylketonuria is due to a mutation in a gene called as phenylalanine hydroxylase so a mutation in this gene will result in individuals with nervous retardation so that is one phenotype nervous or mental retardation could be one phenotype or there is a reduction reduction of hair reduction of pigmentation so these are all the different phenotypes that can result due to the mutation in 
this particular gene. So a single gene can result in many phenotypic expressions. Example, phenylketonuria. So because of the mutation in this particular gene, the downstream processes, the protein formation, etc., would be hampered. We will study about this. What is this? And once again, we will study about this also. So that is polygenic inheritance and pleiotropy. Based on our previous discussions till now, we know that every trait is controlled by a gene or many genes. So basically that is alleles. And when these genes which are present on the chromosomes during cell division, these are equally distributed between the parent and the offspring. These genes are inherited. Now, due to some reasons, if these genes or alleles, if these are altered or changes takes place in the gene, it will also result in the change in the phenotype. So a change in genotype will result in change in the phenotype. So such changes in the genes or alleles, you know it happens because of two or three different reasons. Number one, during DNA copying, some of the base pairs are not properly copied. So due to errors in DNA copying, one that could happen. Another is during genetic recombination, new recombinants will be created. Not only that, there could be mutation. So a mutation is a sudden inheritable change in the DNA. So the base pairs in the DNA will be changed and these changes can be passed on to the next generation. Those are what are called as mutations. So these changes in the DNA or gene, it could be maybe because of removal of a particular segment of gene. So a particular portion is missing, so loss of gene or it could be because of addition of certain segments, insertion or certain segments of the gene or DNA are duplicated. So due to this also there could be a change in the DNA and this particular insertions and duplications will also result in what is called as frame shift mutation where the reading frame of the gene will change about which we will study in the next lesson and it could be as simple as point mutation where there is only a single base pair change in the DNA for example let us say this is a sequence for a particular gene so a point mutation when this gene is being copied during DNA replication, one of the base pairs is wrongly copied. So there is only change in one nucleotide. This is what is called as a point mutation. So all this could result in change in the gene or change in the allele, which will in turn result in change in the phenotype of the individual. We also know that this is because of because of this there is dominance and then there is recessiveness. So this is where there is a change in the DNA or in the gene. Also, it could happen that during cell division, when the chromatids are moving apart, especially during anaphase, when from the equatorial plate chromosomes are getting pulled apart to the opposite poles due to maybe malfunctioning of the spindle fiber mostly one cell will get additional set of chromosome another cell will get a lesser number of chromosomes so absence of chromosomes in one cell 
result in addition of chromosomes in another cell. So that could also result in genetic disorders. So when these cells are passed on to the next offspring, this also could result in genetic disorders. So in general, we can classify the genetic disorders into two types. Mendelian disorders. So there is a change in the gene or the allele and the inheritance of these disorders from one generation to another generation it will follow the basic laws of Mendelian inheritance. It will exactly follow Mendel's laws of inheritance that is Mendelian disorders. Disorders that are resulted from unequal distribution of chromosomes. One cell will have extra set of chromosomes, another cell may have lesser number of chromosomes. Such disorders are called as chromosomal disorders. This is due to what is called as aneuploidy. Aneuploidy. Ploidy refers to the number of chromosomes in a cell. A new ploidy. So this could be maybe due to loss of chromosomes or due to gain of chromosomes. Say for example the loss of chromosome can be called as monosomy whereas the gain of chromosomes can be called as trisomy. So, in the case of Down's syndrome, this is the case of trisomy, where an extra 21st chromosome is present in human beings. So, extra chromosome is present, that is trisomy, where one chromosome is lost. So, this example is Turner syndrome, where there is one less X chromosome in females. That is what is called as monosomy. So there could be increase in number of chromatids or chromatids could be lesser in number. That is what is called as monosomy and trisomy. In plants, we find what is called as polyploidy. That is extra set of chromosomes complete chromosomal sets are inherited so this is usually seen in plants polyploidy instead of diploidy they could exhibit triploidy tetraploidy hexaploidy etc so complete set of chromosomes are extra whereas here it is one chromatid is less and here there is one extra chromatid that is one chromo single chromosome. These are Mendelian disorders and chromosomal disorders. Now we know that when an individual inherits such altered or changed genes or chromosomes they will show the phenotype. So how to know whether a particular trait how is it expressed in different generations? We can study it using pedigree analysis. So it is a tool which will help us to study how a specific trait, a single trait is passed, is inherited in many generations of a same family. So let us say there is a family and you want to track how a particular trait or a particular disorder is passed on across many generations of the same family. We can do it with the help of a pedigree or a family tree. So this will help us to track how the traits are passed. For example, a this particular trait, ear lobe, 
in some individuals we find that the ear lobe is free for example in this case whereas in others the ear lobe is attached like this this is a trait so with the help of our pedigree we can track how this trait is passed across many generations in a family there is another trait called as widow's peak where near the forehead you see a distinct v mark like this widow's peak some individuals have it some individuals don't have it so with the help of a pedigree analysis we can track how a specific trait or a disorder is passing across different generations in a family to do this we require certain symbols so this is a symbol for a male it is mentioned in the textbook a circle represents a female this represents mating whereas a double line this represents mating between relatives maybe man between cousins etc so this is used to represent that a diamond symbol is for sex unspecified it's neither a male or nor a female possibly a transgender so we can use this symbol so how to draw a pedigree let us take one simple example and this square with red color inside or a circle with red color inside this is a affected individual means they have this disorder affected male and affected female these are the simple basic symbols so let us draw a quick pedigree we have a male and we have a female and let us see so this particular symbol means that there is a mating between a normal male and a normal female and they have two children the first child is a female girl second child is a male so it is an exactly same order so this represents that they have three children and let us say the female is affected so there are three children first child is a girl child the rest two are boys and this particular girl child shows some disorder and when this child is now married let us say and they have two children both are sons and one of them is affected so like this we can draw a family tree or a pedigree and track how traits are passed so let us now study in detail about the mendelian disorders and chromosomal disorders in mendelian disorder there is a change in the gene or the allele when this changed gene or allele is inherited by the child it will result in the disorder and this follows the mendelian laws of inheritance so there are five disorders that we are going to study briefly color blindness hemophilia sickle cell anemia phenylketonuria as well as thalassemia so in the first case color blindness this is a case where the affected individual is not able to discriminate between the colors red and green so this is because 
the genes present on the cones that is the red cone and the green cones are altered or changed so they cannot discriminate between red color and green color this color blindness is an example for a sex linked recessive disorder sex linked because the genes responsible for identification of red and green color is are present on the x chromosome which is a sex chromosome it is a recessive disorder meaning for the individual to show the altered phenotype they should possess two recessive genes together that is a homozygous recessive condition will result in the diseased phenotype if there is a heterozygous condition for example one dominant gene and one affected gene the individual will only carry the altered gene but they themselves will not have the disease so they are only carriers so this color blindness is seen in approximately 8% of the male population whereas only in 0.4% of females meaning males have a 20 times more chance of being color blind this is because very simple females have two x chromosomes because the genes are present on x chromosome right so if one x chromosome is normal and other is affected the disease will not be seen in the mother or in the daughters but since males have only one x chromosome if they have inherited this x chromosome from the mother 50% sons will have color blindness therefore mothers are only carriers but they are unaffected for a female to be color blind the chance is that both the mother has to be a carrier and the father should be color blind in that condition the daughters can be color blind or else the mother is only carrier but they are unaffected that is they are in the heterozygous condition this is an example for a sex linked recessive disorder something very similar we have in the case of hemophilia hemophilia is also an example for a sex linked recessive disorder in this case also the mother is unaffected she is a carrier whereas the sons will have the altered phenotype they will show hemophilia what is hemophilia hemophilia is a condition it's not a disease it is a condition where if there is a cut or a wound then there is continuous bleeding this is because one of the factors required for formation of blood clot it could be factor 8 or it could be factor 9 so these factors or proteins are missing due to the mutation so because of which they are hemophilic so once again like color blindness only when the mother is a carrier and father is hemophilic only then the daughters will carry the disease or else this disease is seen mostly in males only because males have only one x chromosome whereas females have two x chromosomes therefore it is sex linked recessive disorder meaning for the disease there should be a recessive condition the next types of genetic disorders are autosomal recessive disorders meaning the genes responsible for the phenotype are present on the autosomes these are not present on the x or y chromosome but they are present on the 22 other pairs called as the autosomes and these are also recessive meaning the heterozygous condition will not result in the disease only when both the alleles are recessive and present together only then the condition is seen so sickle cell anemia as the name suggests here the individuals carrying the mutated gene their 
RBCs will have a sickle shape instead of the normal biconcave disc shape the individuals who are affected will have a sickle shaped RBCs this is because of point mutation we know that RBCs contain hemoglobin hemoglobins are made up of two chains one is alpha chain and one is a beta chain so because of a mutation at the sixth position of the beta globin chain what happens is instead of gag which is responsible for production of glutamic acid during copying there is a point mutation there is a single base pair change instead of gag you get gug this is at the sixth position of the beta globin so instead of a proper glutamic acid being formed valine is produced so instead of gag gug is produced so what happens is during oxygen stress conditions when oxygen availability is less so the globin chains will undergo polymerization they will lose their normal shape and they become sickle shaped these are these individuals have low affinity for oxygen and they feel tired because oxygen availability is less that is about sickle cell anemia something similar to sickle cell anemia we have what is called as thalassemia in thalassemia it is also an example for autosomal recessive disorder the difference between thalassemia and sickle cell anemia is that in the case of thalassemia it is a quantitative disorder whereas sickle cell anemia is a qualitative disorder here there is a change in the gene a wrong gene is produced because of point mutation whereas in thalassemia the number of alpha chain or the number of beta chain produced is less due to the change in the genes controlling the production of alpha globin and beta globin so the hemoglobin contains lesser number of alpha globin chain or lesser number of beta globin chains so because of this the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin is reduced and one of the classic symptoms of thalassemia is once again anemia so individuals are anemic so that is the difference between thalassemia and sickle cell anemia where here the rbc shape is changed into sickle cell whereas here the production of globin chain is affected the last type of disorder which is also an example for autosomal recessive disorder is phenylketonuria about which we studied in the pleiotropic phenomenon where what happens is in phenylketonuria the amino acid phenylalanine needs to be converted into tyrosine with the help of an enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase but because of a mutation or change in the gene that is responsible for the production of this enzyme this enzyme is non functional because of mutation so conversion of phenylalanine into tyrosine is not taking place it is stopped so what happens when phenylalanine is not converted the phenylalanine amino acid is converted and stored in the form of phenyl pyruvic acid and when more and more phenyl pyruvic acid accumulates in the brain this will result in mental retardation it can also result in reduction of hair reduction of skin pigmentation and also because kidneys cannot purify it these are thrown out in the urine so phenyl pyruvic acid can be seen in the urine also these are the symptoms of phenyl ketonuria when their concentration increases in the brain it will result in mental retardation all these are examples for 
Mendelian disorders. Color blindness and hemophilia are sex linked recessive, which are present on the X chromosome, whereas thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, and phenyl ketonuria are autosomal recessive disorders. So, in all these situations, the disease is seen only in the homozygous condition when both recessive genes are present together only then the disorder is shown next let us discuss about chromosomal disorders chromosomal disorders result due to an aneuploidy that is during the chromosomal separation one cell receives an extra chromosome another cell receives a chromosome less there are three disorders that we will study as an example for chromosomal disorders. The first one is Down syndrome. This was first observed by Langdon Down. That is by the name Down syndrome. Down syndrome is an example for trisomy, meaning there is an additional chromatid or chromosome that is inherited. That is, there is an extra 21st chromosome so that is trisomy therefore the karyotype of the condition would be 45 plus xx or xy it could be a male or it could be a female but instead of the normal 44 autosomes there is one extra chromosome therefore trisomy and individuals who have down syndrome they exhibit the following symptoms Usually they are short, statured, with a broad forehead and a round head which is very small, partially open mouth, the tongue is furrowed, palm is once again broad with lot of creases, so creased palm and sometimes they could also have certain congenital heart condition and there is usually some lack of psychomotor skills so they could be either physically or mentally retarded that is about the down syndrome the next one is Klinefelter's syndrome this condition is seen in males in Klinefelter's syndrome there is an additional X chromosome so there are total 47 chromosomes 44 autosomes and males will have a additional X chromosome so 44 plus XXY such males are very tall and the overall development is masculine they will have strong masculine features but due to the presence of this additional X chromosome they will also exhibit certain feminine characteristics such as gynecomastia that is the development of breasts and these individuals are sterile that is Klinefelter's syndrome opposite to Klinefelter's syndrome is Turner's syndrome here there is one less X chromosome one X chromosome is missing so there are 45 chromosomes 44 autosomes and females will have one X chromosome less so this is an example for monosomy where one chromosome is less monosomy the affected females are short they are sterile because their ovaries are rudimentary and they also lack certain secondary sexual characters so they have less of feminine characteristics and they are sterile that's about Turner's syndrome all these are due to the extra chromosome being present or due to a less chromosome being present that is about the genetic disorders that is the end of the lesson principles of inheritance and variation thank you